Hi Rebecca, how is your night shift? Hi. Oh, it was so bad, so many patients, uh, so busy, so it was not Yes, yesterday was very bad. Hey guys, do you know that the patient you admitted to medical ward last night ended up to be a myocardial infarction? Oh no, which one? You know, Mr. Lau, the 48-year-old gentleman whom you diagnosed with acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma with pneumonia? The one that I saw last night. Yep. Actually, he is our regular patient. He always had bronchial asthma, come in with one or two naps and then discharge with prednisolone, sometimes antibiotics. What did he present with last night? Just shortness of breath and cough. Oh, did he complain of any chest pain? No, no chest pain. But did you actually ask about his chest pain? No, I didn't. Yesterday night was so many cases. I don't have time to ask him and then I don't even have time to sit down. That's the thing, when we asked, he did mention about having some chest discomfort and also giddiness. And he just described it as doesn't feel right. Oh, perhaps we should observe him longer. But then we really don't have the time and then when um, we want to discharge him, it's already passed over, so we just pass over the case. It was a good thing that in the ward, we managed to get a little bit more history and this this time he told us about his chest pain. In fact, his blood test came back and his drop T was sky high. Wow. Mm. When we did the ECG, we found deep T inversions in the anterolateral leads V4, V5 and V6. Oh, no ST no, elevation? there were no ST elevations. Mm, it's good that we didn't discharge the patient. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, before I forget, do you remember about the MVA case that yeah. we had attended to earlier? He had an intracerebral bleed. Ah, yes, yes, I remember that guy. He had a temporal parietal bleed. Yeah, that's right. Did you do a chest x-ray for him? Um, I did ask the houseman to um, order a chest x-ray, but I'm not sure if he did review it. Guess what? His chest x-ray came back and it showed a pneumothorax. But it was still rather obvious on the chest x-ray. Oh, it was too busy last night. I didn't get the chance to review the x-ray. Hi, and welcome to our MOOC. What you have just seen is a snapshot of some of the cognitive fallacies that may occur in clinical decision making. These cognitive fallacies or cognitive errors or cognitive biases are often not due to the lack of knowledge on the part of the clinicians, but rather it has to do with how we as doctors, nurses and healthcare providers think and act. Well, in other words, how we think often determines the quality of the decisions we make. A fallacious cognitive process may lead to diagnostic errors which in turn affects how we treat our patients, the type of medications we give and not giving, and these consequently may also affect our patient's safety. Of course, this does not in any way suggest that the patient's safety is only compromised due to the cognitive fallacies of the clinicians. There are many other system-related problems, weaknesses and loopholes that may also jeopardize our patient safety but nonetheless cognitive errors still remain an important aspect. So in this course we will first take a broad view on some of the defects within the complexity of a healthcare ecosystem before we zoom into the cognitive process of a clinicians that may lead to diagnostic errors.